a speech today. And um, so I, I spent a lot of time preparing for them. And I, 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 I don't think I can give an A-plus presentation on vehicular homicide. And so I wanted to save it and hopefully do it Monday. So I might do another one on Monday, but for today. Tuesday. I think, or Tuesday, sorry, Tuesday. thank you. Do it on Monday, no one's going to hear. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't so, hear. So um, this, is, uh, this is actually a topic that I didn't even have in class. So I, I, this is a chapter 11 from my psychology book. And um, it's not actually a chapter that we did in class. So this is primarily my experience with it, as well as learning from the book, as well as learning from people and their habits and all kinds of stuff. So this is stress and health. Uh, stress and health is kind of an important topic. Everybody here gets stressed out at some point. It has a huge impact on our health. Everything from our daily life to our future, our goals, everything can be impacted by stress. Uh, a lot of the things that people have to do with stress as far as like what, what people get worried about the most, this guy right here, he's He's trying to cope with some stress. I mean, he's got the coffee, but generally coffee doesn't really calm us down. It might give us a few moments of bliss, but really it's just gonna make us more stressed. So as delicious and helpful as we think it might be, it's really not gonna help that much. These are actually some of the effects of stress. Uh, when it comes to stress, we've got huge effects on the body. Everything from the nervous twitch that you have when you're speaking to just twitching in general, muscle spasms. Uh, things like headaches, hot muscles, even breathlessness and skin irritations, these are all huge related to stress. They're very, very impactful on our lives. When it comes to emotions, we don't think about it very often, but stress actually has a huge impact on our emotional state. When we're stressed out, we worry a lot. We think about things that make us feel like we're not good enough. We get really fussy. Uh, we might even just completely disappear and not even want to be part of the group or society that we're around. Our friends will be like, well, why are you, what are you doing? I'm, well, I'm just at home doing my thing, but really we're just stressed out. Uh, that goes into our mind state, what's kind of going on inside our head. We're worrying about things. We're concerned that uh, the decisions that we have aren't correct, so we spend a lot of time making bad decisions, and we think about those decisions too much, and we make a lot of hasty decisions. A lot of people, you've probably noticed, if you don't get enough sleep, you tend to be very negative the next day, and that's because you're stressed out about the impact you're having on your environment the people, your, your presentation, everything. Um, behavior, that's kind of like the final step when you're dealing with stress. You're more accident prone, you're not as hungry, you don't want to have sex as often, you don't want to actually do a lot of things. You have trouble sleeping, uh, people end up drinking and smoking a lot more often. There's a lot of problems that we have just behaviorally when it comes to stress, and these are all things that we can actually prevent, but sometimes before we actually prevent the problem, we're gonna have to find ways to cope with it. There's different things we can do to have better coping skills. We can do things like try and relax, try and learn, try and read a book, uh, try and be more active, you know, just running around, getting your blood flowing. Well, actually, if you have a lot of the, uh, all the chemicals that are running through your body, so you'll feel a lot better. When it comes to having fun, it could be something simple like just talking with your friends. When you're talking with your friends, there's actually, uh, there's actually a chemical that gets released, and that actually helps reduce the stress. Going to the beach, it might seem like, well, that's only something you do on vacation. Well, there's actually beaches all over this area. You can go to lakes, you can go to the ocean, you can go to a river, and just that constant background noise and that, that kind of like wall in front of you of the water, it, it's very helpful in reducing stress. So just even just looking at the water, hearing the water, it's very relaxing. And that's a huge thing is just being able to relax when you're stressed out. Now, a lot of things that we do to reduce stress, uh, people say meditation is great. Michael uh, mentioned it last week. He was like, this is really one, like, one of the best things to do. That's absolutely correct. And there's lots of different forms of meditation. The breathing exercises that Ms. Hawken so graciously provided to us at the beginning of the quarter, that's a massive help when you're trying to reduce stress. Because it gives your body a chance to kind of like take in what you're trying to deal with and kind of put it somewhere where you're not having to think about it as much. And that way you can focus more on whatever you're trying to accomplish. Uh, yoga and meditation is, is probably the most talked about one, but something like exercising, if you have a test, and let's say I have to be, the, be at that test in an hour, if you've got a whole lot of time or even just a few minutes of time, do a little exercise. Uh, jog in place, walk around the building, maybe just uh, run up a flight of stairs. It might seem like it's a little bit stressful, but those few seconds or a few minutes of exercise is going to help you massively when you're trying to do something that takes a lot of energy and a lot of focus and that'll help you relax quite a bit. That hormone that I was talking about, or the, uh, the, uh, the, the, you know, the, the chemical inside your body, 
that's called oxytocin. Uh, it's a feel-good hormone. It's the thing that gets released when your body's trying to figure out what to do and it wants to feel better. Whenever you feel really good, it's actually because of a chemical reaction in your body. And it's something that happens when you're around people and you're relaxed. It gets released pretty much nonstop while you're doing that. These are a lot of different things that people will say will help you out. Uh, this is just honestly a picture that I found, but these are all really very helpful. Sleeping is actually probably one of the top things that will help you the most. People tend to think, well, I'll survive on five or six hours of sleep. No, you're going to catch up to that later. A week from then, you're going to feel it. The next day, you're definitely going to feel it. It takes about two weeks of sleep deprivation to dissipate. So if you're constantly getting a lack of sleep, you're going to feel that for up to two weeks after that's already occurred. So if you're taking any kind of uh, a quiz or an exam on Friday, and you stay out on Tuesday, and you're like, oh, it's the beginning of the week. I don't have to worry about it. Well, staying out on Tuesday, you're going to feel that on Friday. So these are a couple of things you can do. Without stress, we'll be happy. Without stress, you're going to be uh, energetic. You're going to be able to bounce around and be free of uh, any kind of uh, frustrations. You're not going to have to worry about what people think of you. You're not going to have to worry about what they're thinking about anything, because you'll be happier as a person. Uh, that will make it to where you can do things like taking uh, an exam a lot easier, but even just being present around other people will make things a lot easier. So I hope you guys uh, at least take a chance to, uh, before you do any kind of activity, feel free to kind of de-stress, take a breather, maybe jump around a little bit, drink plenty of water, and get lots of sleep.